Afternoon, everyone. Hope you're well. Hope everyone has enjoyed uh, the Vidic interview over on Vive. If you've not seen it, definitely go check it out. What an absolute treat. And as I said at the end of the video, I don't tend to get starstruck. Um, but for a good five or ten minutes or so at the start of that interview with Nemanja, I was, I was sitting there thinking, my God, like, this is mad. And, you know, you, you want to know what Kino thinks? He's on telly. You want to know what Gary Neville thinks? He's on telly. You want to know what Rio thinks? The guy's on TV. You know, you, you got to wait about four days before they're back on TV again. And um, with Nemanja, he dipped and then ghosted. And, you know, I don't, outside of that Moscow interview, I don't really ever remember hearing him speak. So it, it was an absolute honour. To be to be a part of him now, and you know we've got others um, lined up in the in the pipeline. So uh, genuinely, genuinely, uh, can't wait to to have him on. But um, he also spoke about some stuff that's that's definitely worth us delving into um, and reacting to, and 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 some stuff very pertinent to the team uh, at the moment. But any questions uh, throw them in. Um, we ended up going for a beer afterwards as well, which which was great. And um, got to ask him about a few things that were put out there about him and whether they were true or false. And uh, it was really interesting to listen to his take on some of those things. Um, so the, the a couple of the big ones, Maguire, Martinez, Woodward, he sort of uh, touched on those. I think that they're probably worth covering. And he seemed to... I don't know if it was a dig at Woodward or even just a comment on the way Woodward um, ran the club compared to how it was run under Sir Alex Ferguson and David Gill. And he says the only regret is that he didn't play under Ed Woodward. Um, obviously, talking about the money and the contracts. Uh, and he says, look, do I regret it? David Gill, Sir Alex Ferguson were at the club trying to set salary levels and the structure and what they have now, what they're going to get, what you have to do to get there. He said, I think Ed Woodward had plenty of time to steer the club in the right direction. I think Richard Arnold's doing well in a short period of time, bringing Ten Hag and certain things they did in the last six months, one year, showing that the club is strong and, and see improvement. Didn't really stick the boot in on Woodward, but there was some truth said, I think, about um, Ed Woodward's reign uh, at the club there. Uh, and I think he did it in a pretty diplomatic sort of way. But I think the message was was pretty clear in what he was talking about there. And, and I wholeheartedly agree I do think Richard Arnold is doing a good job and I think United for a moment allowed salaries and, and things like that to get completely out of control um, and, and I think the blame for that has to be Ed Woodward's feet in a big big way um, you know what happened with Sanchez and, and Pogba and um, the salary that De Gea's on I, I think problematic is all of those Um and I think under Richard Arnold, under David Gill, there was a bit more to it. And I can't remember if it was in today's or if it was in in part one when he, he speaks about he signed for United for less money than he was on at Spartak Moscow. Think about that. He was a cheap buy at 7 million in the grand scheme of things. A few years prior to that, Rio had already gone for 30 million. So he was um, he was an absolute bargain buy. And, and clearly they linked his salary to... Um, his transfer fee in some way and he signed for United for less money than he was on at Spartak Moscow um, and I think Evra mentioned something sil similar um, how, on a scale of 1 to 10 how much was a fan buying on the inside oh straight 90 out, out of 100 I would say solid 90 out of 100 because I don't really fanboy about anyone I mean if you're talking about fanboying Rio rings Sir Alex Ferguson I don't think they shown the wide on it um, but I'm sat next to Rio I actually filmed Rio from the other side on my phone. Um, Rio talking to Sir Alex. And um, it was a lot longer. It was about five minutes that he was on for. They obviously only showed, um, what, maybe 30, 40 seconds of it or so. But it was such a treat to just be sitting there listening. And you fucking Sir Alex Ferguson. Tempted to just grip the phone off Rio and just say, thanks. <laughs> um, but yeah, Brilliant to hear him. Sir Alex Ferguson's knowledge of the game is ridiculous because he was pulling out um, 
things that not games but things that had happened in things in games and it was bang on and it was like oh, i remember that this wouldn't even be a foul nowadays if you did that and oh you know it wouldn't have even been a foul in those days just like absolutely photographic memory of things that happened within games sensational and, and like i said what an absolute treat um that was in there and he spoke about Maguire. And I don't think he hammered Maguire. I reckon some of the newspapers are going to paint it out like he hammered Maguire. But he didn't hammer Maguire. But I think the way he spoke about both Maguire and Martinez tells you everything he thinks. Um, and I think that's massive. Um, so he said he thought that being captain meant something different when he was there to what it means now. Um, quoted Mourinho saying the captain nowadays may not be the guy with the armband. And I'm not 100% sure what he was trying to say with that, but I don't think he was saying nothing with that. Also said that Maguire is good for the national team and that in his lesser days he was also good, but he's failed to replicate that form at United. And I think, again, that's him being pretty diplomatic with a player. Um, we all know isn't good enough. Because then when you hear him talk about Martinez... He came alive a little bit and he opened up uh, a little bit and he says he likes him. Um, he said worried for him initially because of his height, but he's, he's really good in the air, he's a really good character uh, and calls him a great signing. And I don't know anyone that would would disagree with that. Um, and then, yeah, obviously we had the call with uh, with Sir Alex, which was absolutely wicked. Um, yeah, you know, it's... Um, it was great to see them both together. Um, and v Vinic actually came in and caught us all off guard. I was supposed to be filming him. I, was supposed, I had the GoPro ready to try and get that first moment of them walking in together. And we were sitting in a, a restaurant in the Lowry and Vinic just walked in about an hour before he was meant to be there. We were just grabbing something to eat and he's just walked in. Um, walked in and the love between the two of them is genuine. You know, it's straight away how's your family doing what you've been up to what's going on with this do you remember that like um they had a little bit of a minute as he just walked in then he went and packed his bags and um and i don't know if rio mentioned this on a podcast or not but the attention to detail from vintage is he'd, he'd come down to do a bit of spying to see what rio was wearing because he doesn't do this sort of stuff he wanted to know like what's the what's the get up that we've got to um wear for these things Got changed, came back down. They had a little moment out on the balcony at the back of the Lowry together. Um, and then we wrapped and we went and had a few drinks uh, in the bar. And I think we started filming about quarter to seven. We did about two hours or so. And it was gone midnight by the time we left uh, from the bar. So it was absolutely wicked. And it was it was a joy to, to sit there and, and chat to him and... Um, and you know, my son was there and uh, just watching Rio and Vidic quizzing my son about what he wants to do with his life and, and them giving him advice, just absolute dream to um, to just sit there and, and listen to these guys. And you know, they've all got um, boys that are a similar age um, and they're talking about, you know, the difficulties and, and the good things about having boys around that sort of age. So it was, it was interesting. It was really, it was really cool. Um, and having a few bevs with and that. So yeah, really cool. Um, Peter Knight says, Fergie still sounds like he's doing well. Made my heart skip a few beats when I heard his voice. Oh, same because you've heard him on interviews, haven't you? But hearing him just listen, just listen to him actually talking and having a conversation it's been a minute since i've heard that from from sir alex and yeah <sighs> mint um boccaccio says you can see how uh, different nemanja and rio are but how strong their connection is regardless you can see the understanding and respect and trust they have between each other charles says what an amazing interview with Vinic. um wish we could hear from him more often i think that was why it was so, so special interview was because he doesn't talk and because he doesn't talk, you get um, like a, a real insight to him. Um, and I, I, I thought it took him a while to warm up into it as well. Um, but I think he did warm up into it. And like I said, I think it was great. And, you know, 
it won't do the views it should do. Just, that's the way it is. But, you know, happy days. Um, Brian says, honestly, one of the best podcasts, podcasts I've watched. Uh, great to see Rio and Vidic together again. Never been so, never seen you so quiet. <laughs> David says, I was, I was surprised how funny Vidic is. Well, you've got to remember, he definitely learned good English and he's going to have a sense of humour. You know, rarely do you get top level athletes that haven't got a sense of humour, I don't think. It's rare. Um, yeah. It, you know, it's one of those, isn't it? Uh, Red says it's good to see he likes Ten Hag like the rest of us. Yeah. Um, Freya says first interviews, I've felt myself leaning into every word since Rene. I think, again, yeah, because Rene doesn't talk that much either, does he? Um, TF says, Steve, you lot need some real props for everything you're doing. Uh, someone else in the community. Oh, oh someone throwing shade. Uh, l listen, someone throws shade all the time. <laughs> and apparently, I don't know what, I don't get into this shit. I just do me. And the real people know. Who's the ones that chat shit and who's the ones who just get on with it? I ain't no fucking victim, so I'm not going to sit here and do anything like that. Okay, pumpkin. Um, Dylan says, do I see myself ever trying to get a Sky or BT commentary? Nope. Uh, Jimmy says, wish he opened up more about who he would like us to sign. Yeah, he was a little bit off on that one, actually. Uh, Mikey says, I hope Carragher watched that and cringed at his complete dismissal of a legend, a tour de force of a footballer. I'd say, the timing was brilliant, wasn't it? And it, it's been in, in the works for genuinely years, but the timing couldn't have been better. Um, it, it genuinely couldn't have been better. So, uh, yeah, it was it was mega to have him on. And I, I, I agree, I think... I don't know if I said this on the air or not, but if, if he was English, he would have been held in such a high regard. You know, he was very, 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 very close to having seven titles on the spin. Seven titles on the spin from a United team that had previously won one in five. You know, you think defending it once is hard. Defending it, you know, a three-peat whilst being European champions and getting to the final of another Champions League. You know, there isn't an English club that's done that. Vidic was a huge, huge, huge part of that. And in fact, when we lost the league, um, I think both 2012 and 2010, I think Vidic was injured for a couple of those games where we dropped points. Doesn't that tell you everything you need to know? Um, Irfan says, Captain Maguire is to lead by example and be the first to leave Man United. Uh, Peter Keller says, Unreal Pod, Vidic was my favourite defender growing up. Uh, great that we managed to get him on. Yeah, I was I was talking to Jay about this earlier, actually. Um, for me, I always thought Rio was the better of the two. Uh, and my old man, it was always Vidic. But there's there's no wrong answer in that. You know, it, it's just a preference for, for what you want to see, I think. And, and ultimately, I think even if you prefer Vidic to Rio or Rio to Vidic there's an absolute acknowledgement that the other one's unfucking real um, because they just were. And they were, they were, yeah, they, they were a great blend and um, they didn't put this in the edit. Um, when Rio rang to Alex, he said he couldn't split his three partnerships. He had more than three partnerships, which is quite telling he only considers three partnerships and the three partnerships, Bruce and Pallister, they won a European trophy together. Um, Stam and Ronnie Janssen, who won a European trophy together. And obviously Rio and Vidic, who won a European trophy together. So Alex considers that his three defensive partnerships. For me, Rio and Vidic was the best. Stam and Janssen, probably just underneath that. And then Bruce and Pallister comes in third. But the, the absolute lack of recognition that Bruce and Pallister got individually and as a pair, is criminal. Is absolutely criminal. Steve Bruce was a goal-scoring centre-half. He's a goal-scoring centre-half that scored 19 goals once. That's more goals than Michael Owen got the year he won the Ballon d'Or. From centre-half. Um, and I think 
He was either never capped for England or capped once for England. And Bruce and Pallister, despite dominating English football, never got a sniff for England for whatever reason. I'm not 100% sure for the reasons why that was, but they were both absolutely integral. And when people are going to start ranking centre-half partnerships at United, the ones that won the Champions League are obviously going to sit higher. But Bruce and Pallister were absolutely hampered by the fact that we had foreigners in the team that weren't eligible to play um, because of the, the rules at the time. You know, we had Gary Walsh and Nicky Butt rather than Schmeichel and Keane. And Nicky Butt was 17 at the time in the new camp. A fucking slaughtered. Like, it, it, it was an absolute madness. Um, Darrow Bryan says, um, love the vintage pod. Uh, saw Flex on channel. Would I do any collabs with him? I've got no problem with Flex. I think Flex is sound. Um, Prime says, uh, Pally was a machine and Bruce was solid. Also scored headers for fun. If you look at those partnerships, there was a bit of a similarity in all of them. You had, uh, I would call it a stopper and a cover. So your stopper was, of course, Steve Bruce. Man had put his head through anything. Very much like Vidic in the nose department. In the 99 team, it was a little bit of both. Stan was the quicker one, but he was also the, the stopper. So he would be the one that comes steaming in and smash people, but he'd also be the one that needs to cover as well. And that's what made that United team a little bit vulnerable because what do you do? Do you have someone else try and cover the stamp? Ronnie Johnson was a good player, a very, very good player. He didn't quite have the aggression or the covering pace that you had with Stan. Stan was an athlete and he was so absolutely jacked. And then with Rio and Vidic, it's obvious. Stam is, uh, Rio is your cover and Vidic is your stopper. Vidic is going to be one that's going to try and battle, win a header on the halfway line. And Rio is going to drop off five yards, centre himself uh, and look in case he misses that or in case they bosh one over the top. And that's how those partnerships have all worked. Gary Pallister was fucking rapid. He allowed Manchester United to play on the halfway line. Um, and, and that's what was great about all three of those partnerships, I think. Um, Roger says, Johnny Evans learned so much from Rio and Vidic. Luca says, overall, Stan was the best centre-half we've had. That's my opinion too. Um, I don't think there's a hell of a lot between Stan, Rio and Vidic, but that would be my order. And there's not a lot between. I think it's those three and then a big gap. And then you can talk about whoever you want because that them's the three. Uh, TDF says Pallister was a decent guy my dad met him after he scored two at Liverpool and he ended up going around all the lads getting a hotel note signed by the team Mint. Uh, in my opinion did I rate David May or Henningberg uh, David May was very lucky to be at Manchester United in my opinion uh, Henningberg could play um, he was definitely a level above what David May was but David May filled in when people had, and he filled in in some important games to be honest but he was never on the same sort of level as the rest of them I mean Gary Pallister was genuinely top draw um, and the drop off down to David May was was terrible to be honest um, Red says what finally made him decide to come out and be more public I'm not sure actually I'm not sure I think he's if, so at the start of the interview we started talking about what he's been up to and um, he mentioned he's he's done his pro licence um, and now he's doing a masters with FIFA Um and he, he isn't looking at coaching. It's very much in the administration. I know he was going for Serbian FA president. I believe there's been some complications with that. Um, but it'd be, it'd be really interesting to see what he does come out with because it sounds like he's leaning more towards football operation than it is football coaching. Um, Peter Kelly says, imagine a back three of Stam, Vidic and Rio with Van der Sar in net. Uh, no goals conceded all season and a quad. You put Roy Keane in front of him and forget about it. You could pick anybody else in that team. Daniel Riley says Wes Brown was outstanding as well. Totally agree. Um, Dylan says your predictions have made me a few quid on bet, so I bless you. Stay, oh, you on. All right, sweet. Generally, my match predictions aren't that good, but fair play. Um, John says late to the party, but I'm here and I've got to restart it. Uh, thanks for this, Steve. Just what I asked for. Um, Luca says, Stam, Rio, Vidic, special mention to Martin uh, Buchan. Now, anyone that you talk to, 80s or a, a touch earlier, they always shoehorn Martin Buchan into this. I can't talk about Martin Buchan because I've never seen him. 
but I am well aware. Um, we did a sportsman's dinner about eight or nine years ago with um, Norman Whiteside and Brian Robson, and that was an absolute treat. And we, we stayed for a few bevs and, and had a chat with him afterwards. And both of those two, the way they spoke about Martin Buchan, I think he is right in that mixer with those guys. But I can't tell you that uh, because I didn't see him. So I don't know. Um, Il Divino says, Fergie comments were great. Uh, I make it Stam, Rio, Bruce, then Vidic. Interesting that the gaffer put him next to Bruce. Uh, just Bruce's leadership and goals just edging ahead of him for me. Jay says, Lissandro Martinez uh, can be part of that list if he keeps it up for many years. He's got to win a title. All the rest of them have won back-to-back titles. He needs to win a title. Uh, Notch says, Buckham was a titan. Uh, Moran, McGrath were mint for a while. Look, you can't have a top team without a top centre half or two. I think you've got to have a good uh, couple of centre halves. Um, no problem. Uh, Ryan Dowd says, heard you need a website for Paddock. I did fix it, but I could do with a hand because I am a fucking enthusiastic amateur. Um, I'm trying to put some job adverts on the website at the moment and they're, they're not holding them in the centre of the page. They're just full screening them so you can barely see all the words. If, uh, so this is to Ryan... If you want to email um, hello at shrepfordpaddockfc.com um, or the email address that's on my, my Twitter and Instagram and I'll get it through to me. Uh, Jake says, Bruce, Bruce pisses me off at the minute. Um, him managing lower ranked teams has degraded his United stature as a player. There's definitely an element of that because if you're a crap manager, um, it, it makes people wonder about what you were as a player. Mark Hughes has done the same thing by managing City. Because people now go, oh, Mark Hughes. Mark Hughes was a fucking player at Manchester United and a fucking absolute warrior on the pitch. Um, but him managing City absolutely has diminished what he achieved at United. And it's sad. Am I worried about the Spurs game this Thursday with a new gaffer? No, I'm not. Uh, Abhishek says Jamie Carragher is a clown and never stops justifying it. Vidic uh, has dive tackled more in a season than Van Dijk in his whole career. Um, Lee Williams says Mark Hughes, my favourite player of all time, just ahead of Robbo. Dean B says Hughes was one of the best volleyers I've ever seen. Mark Hughes scored goals that you had to go and emulate on the playground and ruin the trousers that your mum's just bought you. Them are the rules. Uh, Notch says, I totally separate the player from the manager. What Robbo wasn't exactly a legend as a gaffer. Yeah, but the difference with Robbo is he did it in Middlesbrough. So you don't really care. I mean, if you live in the North East, you might care. Any success or failure with Middlesbrough, I don't really give a fuck. But when you do it with City, for me, it took away from, from my use a little bit. Um, OCB says, I'd love to see an Ollie interview. Me too. Um, Joseph says, Hughes versus Barca was one of the best United goals for me. That would be the 1991 Cup Cup final. You better believe it. Um, Il Divino says, Steve Bruce would be a Brucey bonus. Forget Ince. Uh, the Liverpool time buries his United legacy. Paul Ince fucked that up big time, I think, by going to Liverpool. Uh, Lars says, Vidic, Stam, Jonsson, Fernand, Pallister, Bruce, Berg, O'Shea, Brown. Uh, and my father said Buckham was the best. <sighs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I can't say that you're wrong. You know, and then you've, you've got the likes of, of, of Duncan Edwards, Nobby Styles, slightly different sort of position because of the way the game evolved. They might be seen as more number sixes now, but, you know, you've still got people like that in the, mi in the mixer. Um, Abhishek says, Ollie's best gift to United was Bruno Fernandes. Uh, Lloyd says was there for his final game absolute monster of a player um, Dylan says how often do I go to United games well I have a season ticket and I go to every single um, game that I can get to sometimes Paddock are playing and I can't get to Thursday games because my missus works so those are the ones I don't get um, Brian says would I agree that with Vida that Gvardiol would be a great sign of United. Yeah, but there's too much talk of him potentially going to City, isn't there? Uh, Leon says, the City team is a level above any Vidic played in. Uh, they will also have a free peat and probably win a treble. 
why is it a level above any team Vidic played in? Do you have any evidence for that, or is it just waffle? Any evidence whatsoever? Look, the the nature of football has changed. For all the fucking point shaggers that you had with the, with the Scousers and what they've achieved in recent years, the Premier League requires more points to win it. But Conte's Chelsea got 94 points, I believe, which might have been more than any Mourinho managed. Do you think any Chelsea fans willing to have the conversation that Conte was a better Chelsea manager than Mourinho? Manchester United under Jose Mourinho got 81 points, which is more than we achieved during the treble season. Is anyone prepared to have the conversation that Ashley Young captain Jose Mourinho Manchester United was better than the fucking treble winners? Okay? The teams at the top get more points. The teams at the bottom take less points. There has been a point drift for whatever reason that is. You know, there's been a point drift in Scotland. Does it mean that these are the best fucking teams that we've seen in, in the Scottish Prem? Or maybe the competition's a little bit skewed. And it's hard to judge because on a European level, there's a similar thing going on now to what was going on in 2008. 2008, when United beat Chelsea in the final, you'd had uh, Liverpool win it in 2005. You'd had Arsenal get to the final 2006. You'd had Liverpool get to the final 2007. Uh, and these were teams that were nowhere in the league as well, remember. Um, then you get United and Chelsea, who were first and second in the Prem in 2008. Then United get to it again in 2009. At the time that the Premier League was dominating Europe, Manchester United was dominating the Premier League. So how with any sort of level of confidence in the Pep Guardiola era of Manchester City that's got to one final, can you say that this Manchester City team dominates anything that the Manchester United sides did from that point? Because I think you're fucking wrong. Um, Notch says money is the reason. Yeah. Also, Manchester United never broke 100 plus league rules when it comes to finances. So there you fucking go. Um, Jamie O'Driscoll says, Rooney next for the podcast, please. Mm. Um, Brian Casey says, worst captain since I've started watching him. Um, it's Harry Maguire. Lucas says, any chance of getting any of the Docs, Reds, uh, someday, Buchan, McElroy, Steve Koppel, etc. Sammy Mack, I think, could do some stuff. Um, I don't know what Martin Buchan's up to, to be honest. You don't hear a lot about him, do you? Um, DJ Mebro says, have I watched the YouTube series called Bunch of Amateurs? It follows Dawkins in the National League. Uh, owned and managed by the same guy. Yeah, what Dawkins have achieved is incredible. And I think they've hit like a, a bit of a media big time over the last two or three seasons um, since they've started having content made about them. But they've gone on, I think, something like fucking 16 promotions, 15, 16 promotions in 22 years. That's unreal. Find themselves in the National League. I think they've struggled this season. But what they've done is sensational. Yeah, and, and it's very entertaining content as well. Uh, Ryan says, I think a Ronaldo interview would be the only one to top Vida. Uh, would be explosive. Uh, RJ says, how haven't City been punished yet? Not sure what the score is with that one, to be honest. Um, Ferguson signed new Brighton deal, apparently. Oh, has he? That's a bit of a shame. Um, IR says do that with Paddock trying to do that with Paddock lost a couple of good production staff trying to make do with what we got at the moment um, but we'll see next season might bring something new Mark says uh, when Stockport have won the treble with six homegrown players then they can compare Ant says any more news about what's going on with the sports de science department all went very quiet don't know SK says Fergie question he had 29 centre forwards uh, name them. Amazing question, right? Yeah, Brian McClare, I think, did the same thing um, when we did Dublin. I'm pretty sure he did. I'm tempted to try and do it, but that's, I don't know if that's good content or not. Should we try and do it? Centre forwards. Let's fucking do it, right? So, let's work backwards. So, let's go RVP, Rooney, 
Berber. Welbeck. Chicharito. Uh, Saha. And are we saying forwards or what? Um, it's like, does he count Mame de Youth? Tevez. Let's put de Youth in. Or is he just talking about internationals? Oli. Makeda. There's 10. There's 10. RVP, Rooney, Berber, Welbeck, Chico, Saha, Tevez, Diouf, Oli, Makeda. Let's go Cole, York, Sheringham, Eric, Hughes, Robbins, 16, Michael Owen, Alan Smith, 18, nine to go, McClare, um, Fallon, is that 20? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, yeah, so 10, uh, 7 to go, so, rude, do we count Larson on loan? Dion Dublin. I'm going to put Larson in. Uh, I'm trying to think like early, early doors, 90, 91. I mentioned Robbins. I've got Robbins. i got four to go. Who am I missing? Welbeck. Three to go. Is he counting Whiteside? Is he counting Whiteside and Stapleton? Surely he is. Hughes. I've got Hughes. I think I got one to go. Tony Marshall wasn't his. Ibrahimovic wasn't his. Welbeck been counted twice. No, I've not. Oh, hang on. Yeah, he has. My bad. Two to go. Lee Sharp was a winger. Dennis Law wasn't under Fergie, mate. Bebe was a winger. I'm not having that. I've got Berber. Obertan, winger. Rob Lynn says Davenport. I don't know where Davenport played. He was before my time. Peter Davenport? Is it David Erd? Are we, are we counting Dong Fang Zhao? Belly on? I'm going to have to see this list. I'm going to have to see this list. I think we've uh, we've struggled with we're finishing that one off, haven't we? Yeah, because you've got like Minucho, Davenport, Fraser Campbell. Name of the young Norwegian lad, not Oli. That was Eric Nevland. Neil Webb. Was Neil Webb? I remember Neil Webb as a midfielder. Surely he was a midfielder, right? What about, who was he, who was it that he signed that was shit? Was it Ralph Milne? Did Fergie sign Ralph Milne? Fergie signed Ralph Milne? Ralph Milne? Danny Webber? I guess he's more than fucking 27. I'm going to have to see what the, um, we're going to have to see what, what Fergie counts as his 27, isn't it? Yeah, so here's what I've got. RVP, Rooney, Berbatov. Welbeck, Chicharito, Saha, Tevez, Diouf, Oli, Makeda, Cole, York, Sheringham, Cantona, Hughes, Robbins, Owen, Alan Smith, McClare, Forlan, uh, Rude, Dion, Henrik Larson, Stapleton, Whiteside. Just internationals. Well, Dong Fang Zhao was an international. I don't know how many times he played for United, though. Um, SK says, insane question, really. Shows the length of his reign. Yeah. Absolutely madness. No, I got Ollie. I said Ollie. Lee Sharp was a winger. Wasn't him. Yeah. Rossi. Yeah. There's got to be some stipulation on how many games they played for us. Yeah. It could be Rossi. Rossi could easily be one. I mentioned Teddy. I've not put Ronaldo down because I think for us he was basically a winger. And he said centre forwards, didn't he? It's clearly a quiz question that he loves. <laughs> Chris Eagles was a midfielder, you lunatic. Um, anyways, I'm going to wrap it up there. 
Um, if you've not seen the village interview, I don't know what the hell you've been doing. Go check that out. Um, make sure to subscribe. I can see how many are subscribed. So if you're not subscribing, get subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one. Laters. Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around... Hang on, 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 hang on. Someone says, wasn't Mark Hughes a midfielder? No, he was a striker and he was mega. It's in a bit. Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news as and when I get it, then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms. Nice one.